In the other videos on compounding interest, I took time to develop the formulas and show you where they came from before I introduced them and then ultimately showed an example of using them. I'm not going to do that in this video. I'm going to start right out by giving you the formula for compounding into interest continuously. And it looks exactly like what I've written here. A equals P times E raised to the RT. Uh, you might even hear me call this A equals PERT because it spells out PERT. And I have no sense of humor. Um, one of the things that uh, comes up when people use this formula is a question about where in the world that E came from. You'll recall the E is Euler's constant. It's the base of the exponential function that we've been studying. And it turns out that it's very useful in compounding interest continuously. But before we get into where the E came from, let's just use the formula. So in this example, uh, I'm going to invest $1,000 for three years. The nominal interest rate is 8%, and I'm going to compound it continuously. It's pretty easy to set that one up. I simply say A equals 1,000 times E raised to the 0 0.08 times 3. That's pretty easy to enter in your calculator. And sure enough, when you do that, you get about $1,271.25. So we'll get interest of about $271.25 if we invest this for three years at 8% compounding continuously. So as long as you can enter this into your calculator, you're in good shape. The formula is pretty easy to use. Now let's go ahead and talk about where in the world that E came from. So before we get started talking about that compound interest formula, let me remind you of a special definition we had for the number E. When we studied exponential functions, we mentioned that E can be found by taking the limit of this expression as U goes to infinity. The limit as u goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over u raised to the u power. And that expression happens to equal e. So we're just going to keep that in mind as we develop this whole process. Now our discussion is going to begin with the compound interest formula. We have this formula, a equals p raised to the 1 plus r over m, excuse me, multi <laughs> multiplied by 1 plus r over m, and that is uh, with an exponent of mt. I'm getting my words confused here. So that's our compound interest formula. And remember that m is the number of conversions per year. So when we say we want to compound continuously, what we really want to do is we want to send m to infinity. So in essence, to compound continuously, we want to be able to find this limit. The limit as n goes to infinity of p times 1 plus r over m raised to the mt. Now what we can do is we can manipulate this expression a little bit uh, to make it a little more favorable to us. First of all, this is a constant multiple p, so I'm going to pull that out in front. And I'm just going to babble a little bit while I'm writing this. And you'll notice that this variable m is the thing that's going to infinity, so it's the only thing that we have to worry about in terms of limits. So as it turns out, we can also uh, rewrite the power as well. We can take it outside of the limit. So this value is going to be the same as raising the limit as m goes to infinity of 1 plus r over m to the m to the t. So far all we've done is identify that we want to do an infinite number of conversions and then we've done a little algebra just to associate this a little bit differently. 
So I've just rewritten the formula here uh, on a clean screen so that we can continue our discussion. What I'm going to do now is a little trick from calculus. I'm going to do a u substitution where u equals uh, m over r. And you can see I, another way to write that is m equals u times r. Notice that uh, as u goes to infinity, so does m. So that property still holds that we're heading to infinity. It's just that we're going to rewrite this expression so that it has all u's and no m's. So for example, if u equals m over r, then when I see r over m in my expression, that's going to be the same as 1 over u. I will put 1 over u where r over m is. I've already shown you what I'm going to put where m is. I'm going to put ur. So let's rewrite the limit and see what we end up with. So we still have our p, and then we're going to take the limit instead of m going to infinity, u will go to infinity. So that doesn't change anything. 1 is still 1, but instead of r over m, I'm going to put 1 over u. And instead of m, I'm going to put ur. Raise that to the t. Now I don't lose anything if I just move that exponent r outside with the t. And then the limit just becomes limit as u goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over u raised to the u to the rt. And just a few minutes ago, we mentioned that we already learned what this limit is. This limit happens to have the value of e. And so that is how this formula, p equals e to the rt, was developed. Right? Here's the p, here's the rt, and then that limit inside the parentheses there has a value of e. So there is a reason that that exponential constant e turned up in this formula. And it's actually pretty interesting. So you had the, the formula, you had an example, and now you've had the discussion about where in the world the formula came from. Uh, good luck with your problems.